Well, are we the ones really to blame for Europe's problems? Like this guy says, let's bring in Nigel Farage. He is leader of the UK Independence Party. It is a pleasure <laughs> to talk to you, Nigel. We've been playing your clips Thank for the you. past week or so, as have a lot of people. So what do you think of this claim that it's the fault of the United States, the problems that Europe has? Well, remember, remember, this bloke's an idiot. I mean, a real, <laughs> complete idiot. And I... And I you know, and uh, oh, and I forgot to tell you, um, he's also a communist because when he was a student, it's a twofer. he was actually a supporter. No, I'm not joking. He was a supporter of Chairman Mao, which is just about the most extreme form of communism that exists. So the guy is the guy is a deluded idiot. Um, I do my best in the European Parliament to try and point this out to the world, uh, but he in this very short little statement um, has now proved everything I've been saying about him for the last eight or nine years to be completely true. Look, we all know that uh, under that Clinton period uh, with Greenspan in charge of the Fed, some big mistakes were made yes. in terms of banking and some of those uh, illnesses did spread to, uh, to, to other countries including Europe. But the reason the Euro is in the state it's in is they've put together a completely artificial currency with countries that never fitted together. They've added on top of that a regulatory cost burden through excess regulation on the environment and employment legislation that is driving parts of Europe towards being a third world country. So, you know, America, you are not to blame. <laughs> well, frankly, I wasn't going to lose much sleep over that claim. But on top of everything else, we now, we now have all of these billions and billions of euros, hundreds of billions of euros going into these bailouts. Where is all that money yeah. going? Well, what it's doing effectively is it kind of goes straight through uh, the governments and straight back to the banks from the member states who've given the money in the first place. And it's very odd. I mean, in the case of Spain, uh, the only buyers of Spanish bonds are Spanish banks. Um, and so the, uh, and, and so the uh, European Commission and European Central Bank uh, give money to Spanish banks to buy sca Spanish government debt. I mean, listen, the whole thing's a giant Ponzi scheme, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah. the same money that's circulating round and round and round. And at the end of the day, this whole thing is going bust. Well, it's a of Ponzi no scheme, but all. instead of private investors uh, being the victims, it's taxpayers, because taxpayers are footing yeah. the bill for these bailouts, which, as you say, only bail out the bondholders, which are the banks. So tax pay once again, it's the middle class taxpayer that's bailing out the millionaires, correct? Yes, it is. And that's why we're seeing the beginnings of a real democratic revolution taking place across the north of Europe. Just 18 months ago in Finland, a very conservative country in every way, um, a very new political party headed up by a friend of mine nearly won the general election. Uh, we're seeing in the Netherlands, uh, with elections coming up um, in September, over 50 percent of the parties there in the polls actually want to get out of the European Union, not just the Eurozone. Um, in this country, we've seen my party, uh, UKIP, overtake the Lib Dems in the polls and now posing a real challenge intellectually and in terms of votes as well to the Conservative government. There is big, big change taking place in Europe mm. and that is because we have been led effectively by a group of ex-communists to a total disaster. Well, at, at, the, at the very least, this sort of European socialism, by the way, we have a part of your Independence Party creed where you say, quote, we believe in the minimum necessary government which defends individual freedom, supports yeah. those in real need, takes as little of our money as possible and doesn't interfere in our lives. Basically, it sounds pretty libertarian. Is that a short description of what you are? I, I completely and utterly. Um, in fact, uh, when I finish this interview, I'll go away and I'll drink a toast to that because, you know, that's what we're <laughs> after. You. And, and, and listen, listen, all the evidence is, I mean, what we saw over here in our time zone over the course of the last 50 years was something called the Soviet Union that believed in central management, that believed parliamentary democracy didn't matter, that believed well-educated bureaucrats knew better than we, the poor peasants, how best our lives should be led. And we saw the Soviet Union crash and burn economically, democratically 
and in every other way. And frankly, and, and, and if this shocks people, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but what we're doing in Brussels with Barroso and the other joker, Ra Van Rompuy, running all of this, is we're actually rebuilding a model of centralised, undemocratic government run by the bureaucrats, and we're headed for the same problems. And that is why I don't believe this can be somehow amended or changed or improved. I believe we've got to break this whole thing up and get back to a Europe of democratic sovereigns, uh, nation states uh, that, that, that trade, not just with each other, but perhaps start focusing again on the fact we're living in a global economy. Now, Nigel, as, as you well know, 2010, we had a sea change in our political system, a dramatic change in power yeah. due largely to the influence of people who had ideals similar to those that I just mentioned as your creed. Uh, when do you think it, it, you guys are actually going to take the electoral lead and win some of these elections? Um, it, listen, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, it takes time. Um, this is more a question, I think, of evolution than revolution, certainly in the north of Europe. Um, but I think the Dutch elections in September will be very significant indeed. Um, I think that the, the Netherlands have traditionally been a very pro-EU and pro-Euro country. Uh, and now, hard-working Dutch people are saying, look, why should we sign a blank cheque in perpetuity to go on bailing out Greece? Not just once, but twice, and now we're told today there could be a third bailout coming very soon. And people are saying, we're not, you know, we're not against the Greeks, we don't wish these people any harm, but surely better to recognise that Greece should just leave the euro, devalue, and fight our way back to competitiveness. So I think September is going to be a very important moment. Watch those Dutch elections. Nigel Farage, please come back and see us again, Nigel. It's a pleasure talking to you. Appreciate <laughs> you being here. The United you. Kingdom Independence Party leader. Appreciate it, Nigel.